Hunter x Hunter episode 71. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I'm getting to know the openings, opening songs. This one is the anticipatory dread. True strength. What was all the other ones? <laughs> Gon is ready to die, as usual. Gon cares more about Kalua's hands than he does about his own life, which is not saying very much because he doesn't really care about Kalua's hands at all. Bargain X and X deal. Right, he had this plan last episode. Oh, he's, he's doing a volleyball surf. Do the jack shot. What are they? Oh, they're, they're transformer. Transformering? Protect us, Uncle Hisoka. Damn, all three of them, and it's still difficult. He looks awfully confident. Well, I mean, he always looks awfully confident. He just has one of those confident faces. The kind that doesn't open their eyes very often. Nice. See, Ahsoka completed the party. Ahsoka has joined the team, permanently. This position, though, <laughs> after all we've seen. When has Ahsoka ever been less than perfect? This isn't as glamorous a description as I thought he was gonna give. Power Rangers, that was the analogy I was going for, not Transformers. You know, I, haven't, I don't think I said this out loud, but sometimes it bothers me that everyone seems to be focusing so much on Gon. It's Gon's potential. <laughs> Isoka wants to kill Gon. He's the diamond and Kalu is the sapphire. Up to this point, it's just been speculation on my part, but I feel like eventually it's got to wear on you, no? Kalu, I mean, he cares so deeply about Gon and he's become attached to his friendship. It means so much to him that he's willing to sacrifice himself for Gon. He's willing to put himself to the side for Gon. And there's something about that really amazing and sweet. But there's also something a little bit sad and concerning about it, which is that Kalua, I mean, Kalua is Kalua, right? He's definitely not Krillin in the original Dragon Ball series. All of his love and dedication to Gon aside, he's someone who also cares about the journey and power and growth. And this is a projection, but probably on some level wants to be acknowledged by authority, given his background with his father, wants to be told he's doing a good job, as blasé as he appears, by the right people at least. As a Kalua fan, it's nice to see him get some acknowledgement, even though this is kind of quiet internal monologuing. Maybe what would be the most satisfying thing for Kalua is that he just, you know, is in this secondary role in terms of people's opinion, but doesn't let that affect him at all, maybe even uses it as motivation to quietly slip ahead or at least to the heights of his possible greatness to the point where he's everything he wants to be by himself, for himself, while also having that track record, having always been there for the people around him. It's sort of like everything at once. <laughs> This is one of those moments where you probably have one shot. He's thinking way too far ahead. The mental strength of Kalua too to do this without flinching, despite knowing how how much it's gonna hurt his already weakened hands. Oh yeah, get mad and calm at the same time. Is this new music? It's like extra cinematic, this arc. Oh yeah, that's a thumbnail background right there. I don't know, Jing so far doesn't seem to care. Feel bad for Kalua's hands. No one to switch with. Look like his, look like his elbows just snapped. I could kill Gon. I don't know if Gon's gonna dodge. <laughs> but it's only one of him. Oh, he dodged. Oh, he died. <laughs> he dodged by dying. The only thing that could stop Gon. Gon's gonna wake up and be pissed. <laughs> he didn't catch it. What? You're doing this for Gon? Uncle Ahsoka, that's so sweet. 
Also, Ahsoka's power, unreal. <laughs> Is he shooting it back? <laughs> I'm just having, I'm having a great time now. Oh, nice. It contains the properties of rubber and gum. Now you know. Damn, they did it. Razor is very honorable. I mean, that was his ref. He adhered to the rules of the game. Didn't cheat. I think he honored Gon's glory, which was amazing. What is this? What show am I watching? Who is this? What is happening? Why is... <laughs> I'm so confused. Why is Ahsoka th this great? Busted through his shoes. Oh yeah, Jing. <laughs> Uh, I just, I forgot what the goal was. Got too wrapped up in dodgeball slash volleyball. Oh, the Ahsoka thing is so perplexing. I'm going to say the same thing I said in the York New City arc. Who are the villains of the show again? Maybe it's Jing. Got any leads? Oh, great. Thanks. Do you have something? Does that mean Jing also was a... Oh, okay, no. Him too, like his henchmen. Funnily enough, I think we've already seen a parallel for Jing with Gon in this very arc. There was the, the murderer guy that he was training with under Bisky's orders, who totally turned his life around because of meeting Gon, probably intentional, to what he said about it taking only one person. I think he's right, but critically, I think it has to be someone you respect. If the right person gives their attention to you, that can be all it takes. It's not always positive either, right? We've seen a lot of negative examples or more ambiguous examples in other shows quite commonly. It's the thing of like the lost person who's constantly been betrayed, mistreated, disappointed by people, or maybe only just aware, keenly aware of other people's massive failures and hypocrisies. In any of those situations, or any number of them combined, you're looking for something to grab hold of. As individuals, no matter how jaded we are, we want something better. So if somebody comes along who has the opposite of that horrible thing or horrible things, you cling extra hard because that's the salvation. It's like, oh, it's, it's possible. It's not only this terrible thing I've been experiencing. In this case, it's Jing, but it also could be all for one in Shigaraki. I also happen to think that's probably the case for the Phantom Troop, since they come from Garbage City or whatever it's called. Krolo gave them something to live for and believe in, to the point where only Krolo and his values in the Phantom Troop matter. That's why someone like Shalnark, who's so cheery and, you know, gleeful, and probably a very sweet, loving person, can do such terrible things. It's because of the focus. Another thought, there's often a real challenge to saving people who are very strong in certain areas, like very intelligent, very bright. If someone is very intelligent, but has a problem in the way they're conceptualizing the world, not many people are equipped to untangle that because of how sophisticated the reasoning is, even if the reasoning is wrong. People have very, very strong minds. Their incorrect beliefs are going to be rationalized to an extreme level of depth that most people just can't begin to touch. It takes someone so far above that to be able to go in and like untangle that knot that it's very unlikely or difficult for people who need that help the most to get the help they need the most. I think this is one of the problems with uh, therapy. Therapy is very difficult. Not all people who are therapists can get into the minds of all the people that they're helping. Somebody who is very intelligent but is ruminating in circles, there's actually a little bit of a danger of them going to therapy because them meeting someone who cannot untangle the knot for them, who can't see the full nuance and complexity of it and be so far outside of it that they, they see where the, the string, the end of the string is to pull it out and fail. And so their answers end up feeling like empty platitudes. To the person suffering, it's just confirmation that they're right and that there's no help for them. <laughs> And I don't really care. <laughs> he may not, though. First time I'm really seeing how, he, how much he looks like going. Is this, is this some vicarious warmth? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But in the best way? So he does care. I guess, I mean, trying to put a positive spin on it, he wants it to be Gon's decision wholly. <laughs> you know, it's really sweet on some level, but it's also hilarious that Jing believed in Gon's strength from what? Jing believed in his own strength so much that my progeny must also have the same strength. The self-confidence is unreal. So I didn't totally understand that flashback. Is he also from Garbage City? Also nice touch that he's touching his shoulder that Jing touched him on. It's a compliment. That's part of it, though. 
I mean, that's not totally separate from what Gon is and who he is. Well, you didn't help, but also you helped a lot. Thank you. I read a comment about the the first Hisoka fight we saw in the battle arena thing that it wasn't really a total win. It was kind of cheating because he had the support of the the string girl in the Phantom Troop, and on some level, I get the idea, like evaluating purely in terms of the the combat or whatever. But then, like back to that thing of what's the game? If the game being played is not you know showcasing your best fighting ability but winning, it's not an accident nor disconnected from Hisoka as a person and his actions that he had that at his disposal. It's it's something that he made for himself. Similarly with Gon in this instance, you can't do it without your friends, but like Gon kind of made that happen. You can always kind of pick apart people's things. Like, well, if you didn't have this, then you wouldn't have gotten that. Maybe that's valid in the cases where like there really was no action performed at all, or there's no connection whatsoever to one's personality or insider knowledge, but often it is. And so it's, it might be disingenuous to discount that information in evaluating someone's skill level. <laughs> Are we still even bothering with the card stuff, or are we out? I guess we offered to help, and it's okay, just, I don't know, he's just one of us. He's now a playable character. Wait, so winning the dodgeball game didn't complete the quest? There's more? みんなそう言ってたまったまま殺されていったわ。おい、悪魔でこれはゲームの中のシナリオだからな。no! Yeah! There we go! Oh, oh yeah, that's it, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, Soka's not one for a group activity for long. It comes and goes as it suits him. Some people just want to see the world be deceived. So we're just having a great time. Wait, we still gotta deal with the bomber. I mean, we kind of anticipated this happening, right? Now he's gonna try to steal it. No. We do not deal with this guy. I think... Well, I don't know if they've seen everything I've seen, but... Fool me once! Fool me seven times! He knows the game. He's good at it. Oh, whoops. Shocker. I think this guy just sealed his death sentence. そうだな。手づけらが観念するとこを見れば、ガキも素直になるだろう。this is very, very relevant to these few episodes. You gotta think about others a little bit. Just a little bit more. And you know Clue would have been right there, too. Interesting. On the plus side, you want to listen to that coughing kid for eight years. Bisky just coasting this whole arc. She hasn't done anything power wise. I suspect she's super beast though. 50 players? We went to the Hunter exam. This light work. I saw 50 people fall through a spider web to their deaths. 
ボーマーの戦闘力はゴンたちの上を行く果たして策は生まれるのか I don't know. For me, I feel like Razor was the real strength challenge. Genthru feels more like an intellect challenge. He's just really smart and he knows the game really well. And he's willing to do more, willing to do whatever it takes to get what he wants. He has gifts plus the advantage of not having as many scruples or limitations, which is always the hero's challenge. Clone, yeah, make a copy. What manner of inappropriate things are these avatars going to do this time? There it is. That was alright. Acceptable. No issues there.